Once upon a time, Will Toledo was a sole man on his own, lonely and individual-like, making music uh, through Bandcamp, making a shit ton of music. He just set out to make as many albums as he possibly could, and then <coughs> created some really beloved lo-fi indie pop rock, indie rock uh, albums that just reached a lot of people just by, you know, um, word of mouth, you know, passing on the internet. And uh, eventually in 2015, he signed to Matador Records, put out Teens of Style, got pretty good, pretty good reception for that. And then he released his magnum opus in 2016, Teens of Denial, which you cannot deny. You cannot deny that that was a fantastic indie rock album. Jesus Christ, it, it, we don't get many of those anymore. Um, even Pitchfork doesn't care about indie rock albums anymore. But Car Seat Headrest came through with an amazing album in Teens of Denial. And of course, at that point, with the signing to Matador Records, he accompanied. He was accompanied by other people, a bass player, you know, um, other members, a drummer, um, and then it became a, more of a band. But the 2011 album Twin Fantasy was during a period where Will Toledo was doing it all on his own, and he still got a lot of people loving this album. And he decided that with the band Car City Headrest, they would recreate the album. Which in itself uh, is kind of weird because I've always thought about this. I've always wondered, would a band ever remake one of their own albums? It's very common in TV shows, very common in films, but it's always just been a thought in my mind, like, would a band ever do that? Like, would they ever recre recreate something that they've made in the past? And of course, perhaps Car City Headrest isn't the first to ever do this, but maybe on quite a bigger scale, a well-known scale, because Car City Headrest at this point is pretty well-known, and to recreate an album from the Bandcamp days is actually a really good idea, because if you listen to the original, which I actually really liked, and included on my 2011 uh, Best Albums list, if you want to go watch the video, uh, it's a pretty cool lo-fi album, but if you listen to that, you can really tell that it is pretty badly recorded. Like, you could you could easily make so many uh, changes to that album to improve it because of the way it sounds. Will Toledo's vocals are, like, so muffled and in the background that you barely even notice them at points. But there's something about it that's so charming and you've just got to love. Like, I just love the way that album is recorded and it's so like DIY and sometimes DIY sounding music is amazing and I think that album just lives up to that feeling you know sometimes it can sound amateur but sometimes it can sound great and I think Twin Fantasy is a good example of that however this re-recorded version of Twin Fantasy is better it is way better I mean I'm sorry I, if you love the original that's fine I like the original too but well, this is better. I mean, Jesus Christ, some of the tracks just sound so much better now. Holy shit. You know what's weird about this album is that it's obviously recorded before Teens of Denial, like the original version was recorded for, uh, before Teens of Denial, but it's kind of like Teens of Denial Part 2. Like, it's like you could take these tracks as being like B-sides from Teens of Denial. Like, they're so similar in sound and the epic sort of gargantuan indie rock just giant songs uh, reappear here too. And even though I think I'll always prefer Teens of Denial, this new version of Twin Fantasy has hit me in a spot. I didn't think it would have, because at first I just felt like, yeah, it's a Kelsey Headrest album. I enjoy this, but I don't know if I'll return to it. But then I kept going back to it and I was actually like, yeah, sure. Because now I feel like I connect to the lyrics a bit more. They feel more, way more powerful now. Will Toledo has such a better voice. He can just like explode his vocals in a way that just makes you feel for him. But the, the standout moments for me are the like 10 plus minute songs. Because one thing about this album I will say is that maybe it could have been cut a little bit shorter. Um, an hour and 11 minutes is just a little tad lot too long I think. Maybe one or, one or two tracks could have been shorter. But the ones that I love are the extremely long ones, which is kind of contradictory to what I'm saying, but these songs, man, 
Beach Life in Death is just amazing. There are so many parts to this song. It just goes all over the place. But like you think it's over, but it just keeps going. Oh shit, man, I freaking love this track. Famous Prophets, again, this is the longest track here, 15 minutes. A 15 minute runtime of a song may put you off. I don't know, I, I just love this, I think it's so epic, the way he's saying, we gotta go back. It's honestly friggin' great, the emotions that Will Toledo displays on his songs are really fantastic as well, just the way he writes lyrics are always so like, it, it's just like coming from a place that you don't always get with singer-songwriters, I don't think. You can tell that he's very genuine, you know? You can tell that, like, he's just one of those people that is just genuinely a good person that just wants to find the good in people. And when they don't have that, he wants some kind of, like, consequence for their, like, shitty behaviour. <laughs> a good example of what I'm saying here is the Stop Smoking, We Love You song, you know? It's, it's a bit corny, and it's a bit like, well, yeah, you know, smoking is bad. We No one should really smoke. But just the fact that he's like wrote this song, you know, it probably means a lot to him. There's probably someone he knows. Uh, he just wants to stop smoking. He wants to get the best out of them. Just to be a person that can live a long life so he can be with them. Cute thing shows that like nice guy in him. Uh, but I don't mean that in like a bad, uh, bad way. Like, oh, he's a nice guy. But like he... Uh, is in this song like singing about this other person and he's just like singing about them in such a nice way you know he wants something romantic but he doesn't really know how far to go with it it's just something I feel like a lot of people can relate to if they're a bit awkward a bit shy and uh, can't see headrest um, well Will Toledo here does that really well Bodies is a track that is just such an indie rock anthem holy shit like this is straight out of the 2000s, like, you can tell that he's influenced by that indie rock, post-punk revival sound, like, it's totally an Interpol song, like, if you listen to this, it sounds just like an Interpol song, wouldn't even be surprised if Interpol had an influence on uh, Will Toledo when he was younger, and then, of course, when the band have joined here for this version, it just feels so good, it's just such a catchy, like, guitar riff, the chorus just is explosive, ah, oh, man, they do it so well. There's some very sad moments here as well, like the closing track feels like such a great ballad to end off the album. Um, certainly feels like he's been hurt by someone and is just longing for that person even though they're with someone else, but he can just see that they're having fun and he feels like it's not him that's part of that. Uh, you know, a lot of people can relate to this when they've had that situation in their life. And I just feel like this re-recorded version of Twin Fantasy shows all the aspects of uh, Will Toledo's emotions that maybe might not have been as obvious on the first one because of how it was recorded. But either way, both versions are very good. I just slightly prefer this one more. And um, yeah, you know, man, this is friggin' good. This is friggin' good indie rock music. You can rely on car seat headrest for this. I'm just so happy that Will Toledo found a good lineup, you know, like these are great musicians coming together. Like this could have easily gone wrong if they weren't as um, talented, but they all are. Like all these tracks just have such a, an energy to them. Like, especially when the instrumentation riles up. Uh, oh man, it, it, it's a great album. It really is a great album. I'm glad I sat with it longer because I do really think this version is very good. I'm going to say B+. Plus. That is it. If you have listened to this album, let me know what you think. Um, subscribe to the channel for more reviews. What should I review next? All that kind of stuff. Tell me what I should review. What you'd like me to review. Tell me about this album. Tell me about Kelsey Harris. Oh, yeah. And tell me which version you prefer. The original or this new recorded version. Let me know. Let me know. Subscribe. Have a good day. I haven't looked at the sun for so long.